My Former Self. Written by Holly Walsh. Read by Jessica Hines. Hello, I'm Jess. Tonight's story, called My Former Self, is all about lying to lovely, innocent children. Anna Matthews had never given much thought to the complex theories of time travel. She naively thought time was a fixed unit used to measure things like how long it takes for Neurofen to kick in or how long she should wait before replying to her married boyfriend Julian's sex texts without seeming, you know, needy. Anna had always thought that time was totally and utterly locked down, that time couldn't snap or slip or fold or tear. But it was exactly one of these time slippages that woke Anna up one Saturday morning. As she rolled over in bed, slightly hung over from the bottle of rosé she'd drunk alone in front of embarrassing bodies the night before, the classic episode with the cock like a bingo dabber, she had this sensation of someone else in the room. She slowly opened one eye and standing there at the end of her bed was a small girl nosing through her dresser. Anna tried to scream but instead made a kind of rattle, sort of like a shocked, hungover swan. What are you doing? Waiting for you to wake up, I suppose, said the kid, matter-of-factly. You know, it's nearly nine o'clock. You will or something. No. How did you get in my room? Kid just shrugged, which was a wise decision, because it's a much longer and more complicated explanation than this story has time for. What's your name, then? I'm Anna Matthews, said Anna. Huh? Me too. She peered at the kid in the half-light of the bedroom, moving closer to see if she could see the girl's face better. How old are you? asked Anna. I'm eight and a quarter, silly. The kid looked familiar, really familiar. Although Anna didn't exactly remember her own face from when she was eight, it was without a doubt the same child from the photo of her taken at the opening of a local shopping centre, Anna in floods of tears next to Paul Daniels in a shell suit. Bloody hell, she said. You swore, said the kid, relishing the moral high ground. Bloody isn't really a swear word. They just tell kids it is, said Anna. And then refocusing. Listen, I think we're the same person. You're me when I was little. OK, cool. What's that black stuff around your eyes? It's makeup, said Anna. She wiped her mascara off with the corner of the duvet. What was the point in taking it off if you've got no one to wake up with? How long are you here for, then? Anna asked. I've got to get back for a swimming club later. Balls, thought Anna. This has really put a spanner in my antisocial life. I was going to spend the morning watching Lost, season five. Your TV is well skinny. You should get one of those big fat ones from Dixon's. So does my life turn out really good then? Anna looked at the kid. Despite the shock of meeting her former self and suffering from the wine sweats, she had the wherewithal to know she was about to give an important answer. Should Anna tell her eight-year-old self the truth? Did the kid really want to know she'd ended up working for the local council? How was she going to explain her on-off affair with the married Julian, who still wore festival wristbands despite being in his forties? That she usually drunk a can of Coke for breakfast? What kind of a life was that for her younger self to work towards? Anna would have to lie. It'd only be for the day. And she could be a great fake role model. Better that than admitting she wasn't even together enough to recycle. <sighs> Good. Then my life is amazing, said Anna. Slightly taken aback by the confidence of her own bullshittery. I'm a very successful lawyer. <clears throat> oh, right, said the kid, flicking through the channels. Yeah. Um, this is just a temporary flat. I'm actually moving. 
Um, I work in a really fancy office in town and I've got my own jet and yacht and a fleet of Lamborghinis. I own all of them outright, so no mortgages. The kid started picking her nose. Anna racked her brains for something that would impress. Oh, and I have a horse. Again, the kid didn't look all that bothered. But that's mainly because she wouldn't become obsessed with horses for another three years. Excuse me, where's Gordon the gopher? She was pointing at an advert for this morning with Philip Schofield and Holly Willoughby. They sacked gopher for that lady. The kid curled her lip. That's bollocks. She glanced at Anna to see if she was going to tell her off, but Anna didn't care. So, can we go and see your fancy office now? Balls, thought Anna. Yes. Yes, we can. Anna and the kid trudged across the concourse outside her block. A teenager with a fat-headed dog threw a tennis ball against a no-ball game sign. So do you have any children like me? Um, not yet, replied Anna, but I'm seeing a guy called Julian. Gross, said the kid. She really meant it. Yeah, we're probably going to get married soon, added Anna. She didn't know if she meant it. He did once say he might leave his wife for her, but... They were pissed and horny in a travel lodge on the M4, and he hadn't mentioned it again. Anna showed the kid a big glass office near the high street. It was actually where Julian worked, but it was the only impressive-looking office Anna knew. I'm on the top floor. It's got the best views and a free vending machine. I'd take you up there, but it's Saturday, so it's shut. And besides, if I was to go in, then all the security guards will want me to tell them stories about, you know, all the good stuff I've done and how I've really made a difference. Anna turned to make sure the kid was listening, but she'd already wandered off to kick a bollard. Anna and the kid walked down to the river. Opposite was a massive stately home, the kind of National Trust place that your parents drag you around at weekends. I'm actually in the process of buying this house, said Anna. I'm going to add a hot tub and palm trees and a champagne pipe. I'll throw massive parties and invite royalty and uh, have butlers and probably my own zoo. I think Julian and I will have our wedding reception there. The kid had wandered off to chuck twigs at a duck. Did you hear that? asked Anna, a little infuriated that the kid wasn't that interested. You know, I'm quite a big deal nowadays. All right, then. Can I choose where we go for lunch? Balls, thought Anna, yet again. I've just told her I'm a big deal. She'll ask to go somewhere fancy. This lie is going to be expensive. Let's go to Wimpy's. Yes, yes, good idea, said Anna, relieved. Then, waving her visa debit card at the kid, I'll charge it to the company account. Anna and the kid sat at a window table. I've only been to Wimpy's once, said the kid, twisting a sachet of mayonnaise like a bow tie. I remember, for Katie Freeman's birthday. Yeah, afterwards she was sick in the door pool and we all had to get out. They both laughed at the memory of Katie Freeman, who turned out to be a diabetic. Projectile vomiting milkshake. Then, as though the kid had been meaning to ask, Oh, oh, have you ever been to a drive-thru? All the time, lied Anna. I'd have done that today, but my driver has the day off. Anna's phone rang. A picture of Julian popped up on the screen. The kid was mesmerised. What's that? It's my phone. The kid looked at the screen's picture. He looks like Daddy. Anna looked at Julian's caller ID photo. A bit grossed out. I just, I need to take this. Anna got up and walked out of earshot. Julian wanted to know if she was free. Could they meet up? His wife was back at six, but he wanted to bang her brains out. Anna looked back at the kid who was picking the gherkin out of her cheeseburger. Could she leave her here? I mean... She hadn't seen Julian in, like, a week. 
and the time she spent with him was getting fewer and further between. She was just about to agree when the kid looked up. She gave Anna a big, delighted, ketchupy smile and then started choking on a chip. <coughs> Shit, I'll call you back, said Anna, hanging up to help the kid. She slapped the kid's back until the regurgitated chip appeared. The kid looked up at Anna. I couldn't breathe then. Are you okay now? asked Anna. You're really nice. She was so genuinely earnest that Anna felt a hot flush of guilt climb up her neck and face. If the kid really knew what she did with her life, the time she wasted reading the Daily Mail website and how much damage she'd done to her gums by not flossing. How often she'd gone to crap budget hotel rooms near motorway service stations with that married arsehole Julian. Anna felt her sadness quietly begin to bury her. She felt awful for lying. And the kid now had to live up to her fake success. She should have just told her eight-year-old self the truth from the start. Then maybe she'd work harder at her own life and not end up the same as Anna. While all this was happening, the kid just sat there, oblivious of the emotional avalanche happening next to her. Anna felt like she couldn't keep it in any longer. Look, I've lied, I've lied, I'm a liar. I don't work as a lawyer. I don't have a vending machine. Well, I do, but you have to pay. And it only usually has stale Yorkies. Oh. Said the kid licking the ketchup off her fingers and sitting back in her moulded plastic chair. I work for the council and I sublet my flat and I haven't even got a chauffeur. But you've been to a drive through though? Asked the kid. Yeah, I've been to a drive through And you get to go to bed late and not tidy your room and drink fizzy drinks for breakfast. Well, yeah. And say words like bloody and turds and no one tells you off. Yes, said Anna. So none of that was a lie? Asked the kid, very seriously. No, that's all true. Yeah, I can't wait to be here. The kid slurped the end of her milkshake loudly. I've got to go. And slid under the table back to her swimming lesson in 1986. Anna stood under the bus stop, waiting for the 177. Nearby sat an old lady on a bench rifling through her handbag. Anna stared aimlessly at the road, trying to filter her meeting with the kid. Just then, her phone beeped. It was a message from Julian. Coming over then? Anna looked at the message for a moment. For the first time ever, there was no shiver of excitement, no frisson of attraction. She just felt sad. Anna pressed delete. The kid was right. Her life was better than she thought and she'd done enough lying to herself for one day. A bus slowed down at the stop. As Anna moved towards the doors to board, she caught the eye of the old lady. She looked a bit like her mum. Anna smiled, half out of familiarity. The old lady smiled back. Anna, said the woman. So they were old friends. Just so you know, from now everything works out swimmingly. It took a millisecond to sink in, and then Anna grinned. She nodded at the old lady and made her way onto the bus. As it pulled away, Anna looked back at the old lady. For the first time in years, she felt strangely reassured. The old version of Anna sat there, watching the bus drive away. After it turned the corner, the elderly woman looked upwards and bit her lip. Balls, thought the old Anna. Should have told her the truth. That's the end of the story. I guess the moral is, whenever it feels lousy being a grown-up, just remember, you're allowed to eat pizza for breakfast. Goodbye.